Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So welcome back to the lectures on engineering mathematics 1 and this is lecture number 18. We will be talking about the maxima and minima of functions of two variables. In particular uh, today we will be talking about the sufficient conditions and that will be used for uh, getting the uh, or characterizing the point the critical points whether it is a point of local maximum or local minimum or it is a settled point. So, in the previous lecture we have seen that a point a b will be a point of local extrema if this delta f which is the difference between the function value at uh, the neighborhood points of this a b and minus this uh, the function value at a b point. So, if this does not change its sign uh, for sufficiently small h and k then we call that then this has a local maxima or local minima, but if it changes its sign then that means the, the, the point is a settled point. So, in that case we try to get the behavior of this delta f or rather the sign of this delta f by using the Taylor series expansion of this function f a plus h and b plus k around this a b point and from where we got the necessary conditions that to have that this point a b is a point of local maxima or minima f x at this point a b has to be 0 and f y has to be 0. So, which we have observed that there are for example, here uh, 5 points which uh, satisfy these conditions. So, there is a point here and uh, there is a point there and also there are uh, a total 5 points here. And now, in the this lecture we will identify whether for example, here we can see that this uh, looks like a point of local minimum here also it is a local minimum these points are local maximum. But at this point here in the neighborhood if we see uh, if we go in this direction in the direction of uh, this x then the function is increasing if we go in the direction of y the function is decreasing. So, this point is uh, a is, is a point of uh, uh, it is not a point of local x local minimum or it is not a point of uh, local maximum, but it is a settled point. So, now mathematically we will identify all these points uh, with the help of the second order derivatives. So, here this is the sufficient condition. So, we will just for simplicity we use these notations r will be f x x at a b point s will be the mixed derivative at that point and t will be the y uh, y derivative. So, 2 times with respect to y at this point a b. And then if this function f x uh, let us assume that is a continuous and have a continuous second order partial derivatives at this point. And if this point is a critical point then at this point p uh, there will be a local maximum if this r t minus s square is positive and r is negative. This point will be a point of local minimum if this r t minus s square is greater than 0 and r is greater than 0, settle point if this r t minus s square is less than 0 and the test will fail if this r t minus s square will be 0 and then we have to find some other ways uh, to characterize the behavior of this function at this point a b. So, here as written there if a b is a critical point. So, definitely because this is a necessary condition to discuss uh, that this point is a local point of local maximum minimum or a settle point. So, definitely this is a critical point and then we discuss with the help of the second order test here mainly this r t minus s square the value of this uh, expression we can find out whether it is a point of local maximum, minimum, settle point and in this situation when r t minus s square is 0 this test fails. So, let us prove this result how do we get uh, these expressions. 
So, we consider again this delta f because finally, we need to get uh, based on the uh, sign of this delta f the behavior of this f in the neighborhood of a point. So, which we have already seen that the Taylor series expansion of this will lead to uh, this h the first order um, terms and then the second order terms there. Since this a b is a point of uh, is a critical point, so the f x at a b and f y at a b will, will vanish and then we have this delta f is equal to the second order terms. So, h square f x x and so on. So, now the behavior of this delta f we have to to get based on the second order uh, derivatives terms or the first this leading term here the rest all the terms in the expansion will be higher order terms. So, with our notation we have used this f x x r and this x y s and this f k k t at this point a b. So, this delta f is this a simple expression h square r 2 h k s and plus k square t. So, now we will consider that or we will assume that r is not equal to 0. Yeah, We can also assume that uh, if this r is 0 in case uh, then we can assume that t is not equal to 0. So, at least one of them is 0 then we can proceed in this way in the situation when both are 0. So, suppose, suppose we have a r 0 and we have a t is equal to also 0. So, in that case naturally we cannot proceed in this way, but in that case directly from here we see that uh, if these two are 0, r is 0 and t is 0. So, s may be 0 s may not be 0. So, if s is 0 again this second order test will not give anything and we have to uh, go for the higher order derivatives. So, suppose this s is not equal to 0 then what do we get here? We get this 2 h k and s term. So, s may be positive s may be negative let us just assume that s is positive the same thing we can argue when s is negative. So, we have this 2 h k uh, terms when this product h and k whether uh, if both are positive for example, or both are negative this h k term is positive. So, we have this delta f the leading term is positive and we have already discussed in the last lecture that this leading term will decide the sign of this delta f. If it is positive, then the sign of this delta half in the neighborhood of this uh, a b point will be positive. If this leading term is negative, then the sign will be negative. So, here this h k, if this product is positive, we have this delta f positive. If this h is negative and k is positive or k is negative, h is positive, we have delta f uh, negative. So, means this delta f is changing its sign in that case and this will be a subtle point definitely uh, which will be uh, also concluded from this uh, result which I have shown you before. So, we do not have to discuss this separately. So, let us assume that uh, either r is 0 or t is uh, sorry r is not equal to 0 or t is not equal to 0. So, here we assume r is not equal to 0 and now proceed. So, same thing we can do when t is not equal to 0. So, let us assume this r not equal to 0, we can divide by r and multiply by r. So, we got this expression here and this delta f 1 over 2 r. So, in this case we have added here k square s square term and also subtract this k square s square term plus this k square r t plus the higher order terms. Now, the first three terms will make a whole square that means, h r plus this k s whole square these first three terms minus this k square s square and then we have k square and r t term. So, here from the last two terms also we take uh, k square common. So, we have this r t and minus this s square. So, this is the expression the leading one uh, this h r plus k s whole square plus k square and r t minus s square. So, we will consider this case 1 now where we assume that this r t minus s square is positive that is the case 1. So, in this case what will happen when this is positive here then we have this whole square term and we have this k square term. So, we have to now see how this delta f is positive when r is positive. So, r is positive we uh, further assume that 
R may be negative, R may be positive. It's the second order a derivative at this AB point. So depending on that AB and the function, but it will be a definite uh, sign whether it will be positive or negative. So if this R is positive, we will see now here that delta F will be positive. Why? So if we have this expression here, this is positive. So this one is uh, strictly positive. Now. For the neighborhood, either H uh, will be 0, then K will be non 0, or if K is 0, then H has to be non 0. Both cannot be 0 because both 0 means you, we are at the point AB and we are looking uh, at the neighborhood point. So, here for example, we have this AB point. Now, in this neighborhood of this point, either in this increment in this direction is denoted by h increment in the y direction was denoted by k. So, to have a point in the neighborhood one of them has to be non-zero or both, both of them have to be non-zero. So, if both are non-zero means this k is non-zero then we have a, a positive term here the strictly positive term does not matter what is this term here we have the overall a positive number here. So, in that case it is fine. Suppose this k is 0. So, if, if k is 0, then h has to be non 0, h has to be non 0 to have in the neighborhood. So, in that case, this term is 0, and here the k is 0. So, we have h square r square. So, again, this h square r square we have the positive term because h cannot be 0. So, in any case, whatever. Uh, the situation is if this r t minus s square is positive, then this delta f will be positive for r positive. And when r is negative, just the sign will change because this r is sitting here, otherwise the rest everywhere we have this square there. So, what do we get now? That this delta f is positive if r is positive and this delta f is negative when r is negative. So, we can conclude now that we have the same sign because r will have either positive or uh, negative. So, if r is positive delta f is positive and then we have uh, this point is a local minimum in this case and when r is negative this point will be a point of local uh, maximum when uh, this r t minus s square is positive and r is negative because having this delta f uh, negative means that uh, this a b point is taking more larger values than the points in the neighborhood and that means this point is a uh, point of local uh, maximum. Moving further to the case number 2 when we take this r t minus s square is less than 0 what will happen in this case when this r t minus s square is less than 0. So, we have to again carefully look at so, we take uh, this possibility that is let this k to 0 first and then h is non 0 as I discussed before that 1 has to be non 0. So, we are letting at k to 0 and then h non 0. So, k to 0 means this is 0 and h is non 0. So, from here we will conclude that this delta f will be positive if r is positive. So, let us assume here r is positive r can be negative. So, this delta f will be negative in that case nothing else will change. So, here r is positive. So, this delta f is positive because h is non 0 and k is 0. So, we will have here h square uh, r square term which is positive and then the second observation we will take let us take k is not 0. So, k is not 0 and this r t minus s square is negative. So, we have something negative sitting here now and we choose this h now such that h r plus this k s is equal to 0. So, we choose our h so that this relation holds for given k whatever is small you can take that you can we can choose this h here as minus k s over r. So, we choose h as minus k s over r for any value of k. So, on this point here when h is chosen from this minus k s over r for whatever k this first term this h r plus k s this will be 0 because we have chosen our h in such a way that this h r plus k s is 0. So, this term is 0 
and here this k square is positive, but this is negative, this is less than 0. So, the overall this first term for r positive which we are considering at this moment, uh, this will be less than 0 delta f will be less than 0 because of this term. There is no first term if we are in the neighborhood which satisfies all these points, then this delta f is less than 0 if r is positive and we are not restricting for the neighborhood that we have to be uh, far at some point where this relation holds. We, you can be as close as to this uh, a b point by choosing this h r plus k s is equal to 0 for any small value of this k not equal to 0. So, what we have realized here that the delta f is strictly positive when r is positive delta f is negative when r is positive. Uh, so, we assume if we take r negative then naturally this delta f will be negative delta f will be positive. So, the point is that this delta f is changing its sign in the neighborhood and that is exactly the case of the critical point. So, this is the condition if this r t minus s square is negative then we can conclude immediately that this will be a point of uh, it, it, this will be a point of uh, saddle point. So, this is a saddle point it is not a point of maximum or minimum because this delta f the sign of this delta f depends on h and k. So, there are points in the neighborhood where the delta f is positive and there are points in the neighborhood where this delta f is uh, negative. So, it is changing sign in the neighborhood of this a b point and that means this is a saddle point. The third situation we will take when this r t minus s square is equal to 0. So, in this case uh, there is no this second term here r t minus s square is 0. So, the behavior will be uh, discussed with the help of the first term h r plus k s square. At a first glance we will see that this ok this is a, a positive term, greater than equal to 0 term h r plus k s is equal to 0. It k, h r plus k s uh, whole square. So, this is uh, definitely greater than equal to 0, but there is a possibility of having equal to 0 because if this term the second order term becomes 0, then we cannot identify the behavior of this delta f because then the behavior will be determined from the other higher order terms which can make this delta f. Uh, to negative as well because if this term is 0 the, the next term will decide the sign because that might be the case that delta f is negative. So, we cannot conclude out of this immediately by having this that this is here greater than equal to 0. No, we have to have a strict sign here then only we can say okay, this will be the whole delta f will be uh, of that sign. So, here if we can prove that this is strictly greater than 0 then it is fine we can conclude about the uh, point, but here this is now greater than equal to 0 why because if we choose our h r and k s in the neighborhood such that this h r plus k s is 0. So, in that case at all those points in the neighborhood this term will become 0 and the behavior will be determined from the next uh, higher order terms. So, let us uh, write down this here. So, if we take this h and k such that this h r plus k s is 0 that means, h r is equal to minus k s. So, all these are the points in the neighborhood where delta f is 0 plus this third order terms. Then the second order terms of the right hand side vanish and then therefore, the conclusion will depend on the higher order terms. So, we cannot conclude anything in this situation about the sign of this delta f it may be negative it may be positive. So, one has to find some other ways uh, to investigate uh, such points. So, what is the working rule now for investigation of uh, local extrema we have to find all the critical points and these are the points by solving these equations f x is equal to 0 and f y is equal to 0 we will get and for each critical point we have to evaluate r s and t the second order second order uh, derivatives. So, f x x f x y and f y y. So, at each critical point we will evaluate the second order derivatives and for the identification 
we will uh, use this R t minus s square if it is positive and R is negative then this is a maximum uh, point of local maximum. If R t minus s square positive, but R is positive then we have uh, minimum the this is a point of local minimum and R t minus s square is less than 0 then this is a settle point and if this R t minus s square is 0 then the test fails. So, we will consider this example now to discuss uh, find all the critical points of this and investigate their nature for local maximum, minimum and saddle points. So, we will compute first all the critical points and for each critical point we will investigate uh, that R t minus s square term to, to discuss uh, the behavior of those critical points in the neighborhood. So, here we have the critical points now the f x is equal to 0 and f y is equal to 0. So, what do we get f x is equal to 0 is so what is f x f x is 3 x square minus this 12 uh, x. So, in this case this will be set to 0 and this f y will be uh, minus 16 y is equal to 0. So, from here we will get y 0 and from the first equation we will get 3 times x and x minus 4. So, is equal to 0. So, we will get x is equal to 0 and 4 from the first equation from the second equation we will get y is equal to 0. So, we have the point 0 0 we have the point 4 0 these are the critical points. 0 0 and 4 0 these are the two critical points of the problem and in this case now we will compute the behavior of the uh, of this r t minus s square the sign of r t minus s square at all these points. So, at 0 0 point uh, this second derivative which we have to be computed here. So, this f x is 3 x square minus 12 x and then f x x. So, f x x will be 6 x minus 12 and this f x y will be 0 because there is no term of y here. So, f x y will become 0 and this f y was minus 16 y. So, this f y y will become minus 16. So, based on these 3 now we will compute uh, these r. So, f x x at 0 0. So, will be minus uh, 12 will be minus 12 and then uh, s s is uh, 0. So, this is 0 and t here this is t. So, t is uh, minus 16 and at this 4 0 point. So, r here. So, for 6 into 4. So, 24 minus 12. So, this will be uh, 12 s is 0 and f y y is constant here minus 16. So, if r t minus s is square this is a product of these two negative number we have minus uh, plus 192 and in this case we have minus 192. So, here when we have this r t minus s is square positive and r is negative. So, this is a point of local uh, maximum. So, 0 0 is a point of local maximum and in this case this is r t minus s square is negative less than 0. So, it will be a, a saddle point which uh, we have discussed in the uh, in, in, in the sufficient conditions. So, coming to the conclusion here. So, what are the necessary conditions we need to uh, know the critical points because these critical points are the candidates for uh, for the local maximum and minimum. So, we have f x is equal to 0 and f y is equal to 0 that will gives, give us the necessary conditions for the extremum. So, these points will be the candidates which we need to investigate for uh, the behavior the local behavior of the function at that point. So, the sufficient conditions help us to identify these points for local maxima minima or the settle point. So, for that we need to compute uh, r t minus s square if it is positive and r is negative. In that case uh, this comes to be a local uh, maximum if this r t minus s square is positive and r is also positive then such point will be a point of uh, a local minimum 
and if r t minus s square is less than 0 then this will be a settle point. So, it is not a point of uh, maximum, it is not a point of minimum and it is a settle point as per the definition we use and here r t minus s square uh, will be 0 in that case we cannot identify the behavior of this point and then this test at least the second order test fails and we have to find some other ways either the, the higher order terms we have to investigate or we have to directly investigate the behavior of this function at, at that point, but it certainly needs uh, further investigation. So, these are the references uh, we have used to prepare these lectures and in the next lecture now we will see uh, more such examples uh, to identify the local the behavior for the local maxima, minima and the settle point. So, thank you very much for your attention.